I'm at this point in my life now where I just want to know what love is. So I decided to investigate and go on my journey. So here we have L, this point is L, and this point here is O, this is V, and this is E. And I wanna show you how we can calculate this length of L, O, V, E. So first of all, we start off with a big circle. This is called the unit circle because the radius from here to there is, is 0.5. And that means when I draw another circle here, the diameter is 0.5, the radius is a quarter. So half, quarter, and a quarter. So we've, we've got enough information here to start analyzing. I'm gonna shade it in actually. This is what we wanna, we wanna calculate this length here, LV. So I've drawn it again here, there's L. We've got a right angle triangle, we know that this is the radius, LA is a half. We know that this is a quarter. So we'll put a quarter here. We wanna calculate LV. So this is, because we don't know what LV is, we call it X. In algebra, X is always the unknown. And thanks for, to Pythagoras' theorem, where three squared plus four squared equals five squared, just know that Pythagoras' theorem helps us analyze the universe. It's as important as the golden ratio. It's really the key. You must learn the divine proportion and Pythagoras theorem to be able to prove what love is. We can't show without this. So we know that the square on this plus the square on that equals the square on this side. So x squared, um, x squared equals half squared plus a quarter squared. That's all it is. It's just like three squared plus four squared equals five squared. So a half squared is a quarter and a quarter squared is a sixteenth, but we have to make the four and the sixteen the same. So we have to have the common denominator. So if this is 16, I've got to multiply that by four and we've already got one sixteenth here. So we say, what's four plus one? We know we've got five on sixteenth, so it's less than one. And, but that's x squared, but we don't want x squared, we want the square root. We have to say we just want one x. So I'll just squat down a bit here for here. So one x means we take the square root of all of this five sixteenths. So we take the whole square root of that. And luckily we know that six, the square root of 16 is four, and the square root of five is root five. So we have to divide root 5, which is 2.236, by the 4. So when we divide that by 4, we get 0.559. And because it goes on, you must put three little dots, it goes on. So let's take a note, 0.559. So now I know that the distance from L to V is 0.559. So it's 0.559. But we want, we need to know this distance here. So we know that this distance here, OV, is a quarter, because that's the radius of the small circle. So if you take away 0.25 from the 0.559, we've calculated that this distance here is 0 0.309. So why is that important? Because now we know we want to ask what's the relationship between this distance here, which is half. So we know that the, this distance OE is 0.5 or a half. And I'm going to divide the longest section by the smaller section, which is 0 0.309. So if you get your calculator out and divide 0.5 by the 0 0.309, thanks to Pythagoras' theorem, we end up with the golden ratio, which is the ratio of 1 is to 1.618, and that's genius. That's what we wanted to establish. Love has a connection to the divine proportion. Love is phi, the phi love. So this is critical. Again, without the Pythagoras' theorem, we could not calculate this. So now we know that the harmonics of the circle, when we draw the circles, circle within the circle, it's all based on the golden ratio. So that means that phi, 
that what we call pi, if this is one, if you know that if this is one, this circumference is 3.143, pi is 3.141. We've been told that traditionally, but now we know that pi has a relationship to phi. So this pi phi relationship gives the true value of pi to be 3.144, not 141. So the more geometry that we prove where phi and pi are related, then we're onto something really special. In fact, this forms the yin yang symbol. If we drew another circle, well, we're going to see that when you draw the figure right inside the unit circle, it's all golden ratio because we just proved it with this line here. So I'm going to take um, this circle here. We're going to analyze the circumference of, measure the circumference of this and the area and work out its relationship to the semicircle. So I'm going to take this circle and semicircle, which is over here. Imagine I just grabbed that and I turned it around. We, we end up with this very evocative symbol of if this was a circle and I could animate it, DM me if you are an animator and you'd like to do this with me. We can take the circle and as it opens up, it forms its semicircle. But where, if, if it, how do we prove that this semicircle is exactly the same length as the circumference of that circle? Because these two points could be anywhere, but we need to calculate, just like we did with Pythagoras' theorem, can we calculate the circumference of this half circle and relate it to its semicircle to see if they're identical. So what I might do is I'll just take this off here. We're still working out what LOV is. I'm going to put this down. And so we'll call this that we'll call that that was part that we'll call this part two actually. So this is actually part two of part one. And it's we've just done this diagram in part one, but what I've done is I've turned it around a bit. So we need to examine this. I want, so here we have, as if we have the diameter of the circle, the diameter of this small circle before, we made it as 0.5 or a half. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double everything because we want to look at this. We want to calculate the circumference of this circle, not at half, but one, because it's going to make the calculations easier. So you know from school that the, circumference of any circle, the circumference of this circle is called 2 pi r. But 2 r, if that's a radius and a radius, that's really the diameter. So the circumference, the circumference of a circle is called pi times d. And we're going to show here that pi, the true value of pi is 3.144. That's what this is all about. So by having a diameter of 1, we can say that this distance here, if this is one, this distance here is, is pi, it's 3.144. So we know that, we'll tick that. And what's the area? Whereas, let's, let's look at the large circle. If this is the diameter, we know that if that's one, if this is one, we know that this is one, and that's one, so now the diameter is two. So we plug the formula, the circumference of the large circle, is pi times diameter, so that's pi times 2, which means it's 2 pi. So this whole circle, th this whole circle now is double 3.144, which is 6.288, right? Okay, so we've done all that. Um, so we'll tick this one here. So now, so that's the circumference. That was looking at the length, right? Let's now look at the, um, the, the area. So that means, let's go back to this small circle. I want to know the square area. Like if you tiled that small circle, what's the area? So you know that the area of a circle is called pi r squared. So you do need to know the radius here. So we need to know that the distance from there to there is a half. So you put pi times a half squared, and the half squared is... A quarter so this is called pi on four right so pi on four what let's look at pi we know that pi is 3.144 but 
but we want a quarter pi. So you divide that by four and you end up with 0.786. Now the amazing thing about 0.786 is that it's a harmonic of the golden ratio. In, in what way? So if you take, we know that phi is 1.618, but the square root of phi is what number multiplied by itself gives 1.618. The answer is 1.272. So 1.272 is called the golden root, and it's the key to the height of the Egyptian pyramid. But when you take, so that's called the square root of phi, but when you take the reciprocal, you say, we divide 1.272 into 1, so the reciprocal of the golden root equals 0.786. And that's the number we got for pi on 4. For this area here is ringing the bell saying, hey, I am connected to the harmonics of nature of flowers and human proportions and planetary distances. So this is saying that the circle within the circle is based on the golden ratio, not the traditional pi. That's a distortion. It's a deficiency. This is the true mathematics of the circle. It's all based on the golden ratio. And then let's, so that's a quarter of pi. And, let, and the area of this large circle is pi r squared. But because r is one here, to know the area of this whole thing, we know that it's pi times one squared, which is pi. So this whole thing is 3.144. Now, we need to know that when I'm talking about the true value of pi, it, it's called Jane pi, J pi. To get 3.144, how did we get this value? We took the number four. See how the number four arose here? There's this thing about the quartering of the circle that um, this here is one quarter of the whole circle. So this number four is critical in establishing that when we take the four and divide it by a harmonic of the golden ratio, 1.272, four divided by 1.272 equals the true value of pi. Now we've just worked out that this is the yin-yang symbol. If you draw another circle here, this is your traditional yin-yang symbol, which is all based on the golden ratio. And here, th this if this, this distance here is um, one, one unit, this axe head here is also the same area as this circle here. So the sum of this figure eight, these two eights, is the same as the sum of these two kind of Viking axe head shapes here. Just one second, I'm just going to turn this off here. Um, just to continue a little bit more, I just want to conclude that when we draw the figure eight, which is kind of like an infinity symbol, let me show you this infinity symbol. If we take the slinky, and we know that when we join N to N, we get the torus, right? The most hydrodynamic shape in the universe. So here's, here's the torus that turns inside out. If we cut it in half, you know that we get the infinity symbol. So when we're drawing that figure eight, we're actually seeing the infinity symbol, right? But when we draw the circle around it, like we've drawn up here, by drawing the circle around the figure eight, we're actually saying what we're actually looking at the figure, the torus inside the sphere. So this circle is the sphere. This figure eight is this um, transverse cut of the torus. So we're looking at the multidimensional geometry here. And what we've established is that when by analyzing this, this flower that opens up, we can prove correctly that when this opens up, the circumference, it's exactly at the halfway point because you could have thought it's here or there. We're not sure. But now we know by doing our basic formula and that the circle is based on the golden ratio, we now know as a fact that this is a flowering of consciousness, that when the unit circle opens up, it has a harmonic relationship to everything in the universe.